Salut Kota, this is Piski here. Welcome back to another tutorial. Home greetings to those who are joining us for the first time. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can enable two-factor authentication on your Keyclock server so that when a user tries to log in, he can enter a username and a password and also an OTP. We are going to integrate with the Google Authenticator. You can also use Microsoft Authenticator but for this tutorial, I'm, I will test with Google Authenticator. As you can see on this screen, this user, a uh, code with BISC, you can see there's the password and there's an OTP in credentials. So this user will log in with both username and password. For security reason, this way is a better to enhance security on your application. Let me show you an example. So this user, you can see, is login with the password and OTP. If this user tries to log in here, the user will get an invalid credentials because it's supposed to pass an OTP from Google Authenticator. So from Google Authenticator, you need just say to say OTP here and we can enable this and here you can enter an OTP value. So let me enter the OTP value. My OTP value from Google Authenticator it's 191779 and I will try to log in. After clicking this, you can see I get the access token. So by the end of this tutorial, you will be, you'll be able to implement this in your Keyclock project. So let's get started. So what I did to achieve this, uh, I forked a project uh, from this uh, Proto Reality Games and I forked it. You can check this link so we can check this on my github so after i forked this one this project is outdated i think it was last pushed two years ago so i'm using the latest i'm using the latest key clock so i i have to do that so that i can update the dependencies to make sure it's compatible with my latest key clock version so after i forked this i made some changes to this code and you can fork you can go and fork also this project from me and you can start to build it and you can add extra things to your extension so i uh, thanks for this developer who did this so after that, i updated my dependencies and i also did some code changes to this so before we go any further there are things that we need to do before we start to do to to implement this we must create a managed managed to fa row so let's go to our key clock so far in my key clock it's down so let me start my key clock i will just say docker compose up so my key clock is, is started so i can log in now and you can see my user right now is not configured otp so we need to create a new row and the name of this row i can say create row and the name of the row is manage to fa and i just say description manage to fa like this so we have managed to fa row so what we need to do we want to go to this default row and we need to assign a row and then the row that you want to assign it's manage to fa so this for all our users, they extend this default. So every user must have manage row to FA for the for for the user to be able to to enroll for two factor authentication. After we are done with this, we can go back to to this one. So the first step is done, and we need a valid user ID for our URL. Then must be a service account. We configured this. So this is the URL that you want to do to execute so this is a get method so we want to generate a 2fa means a, a qr code that we scan with our device so that a user can can test this so before we do this we need to build our application to have this extension so to build this application our application to have extension so in our project so what you want to do to, for our application we need to do maven clean and package to this dependency that i i i forked so i cl click clean 
and you do the Maven package. So after packaging, you, you see we are going to have a target folder and this is the extension that you want to use. So to use this extension, we need to add it to, to your Docker Composer. So, so where you have a Docker Composer YAML, you can copy and paste this. Or I just do copy and open this project where I have my Docker Composer running. So I will paste this here and I will replace, I will overwrite. So after overwriting this, if you go to your Docker Composer YAML, on your volumes, you need to add an extension. So this folder where I put my jar, this one, the extension for two-factor auth, you, it is in this folder extensions, as you can see here, and everything is there, will be added to opt key clock providers. So after doing this, you have to run your application, your dependency. So I will pu I'll put it this down. And I'll say up again. You can see it's now sh it's it's saying this because it's it's saying this two-factor authentication room resource provider. This is the one that is responsible for two-factor authentication. It means our dependency has been added into the project successfully. So the next thing that we can do, let's go back. We can go back to so this one is no longer necessary. So what we need to do, we can come here and we need to call this endpoint a get endpoint. From that get endpoint, you need to pass a valid user ID. So if I reload here, it will allow me to re-log in because the session has expired. So I will go back to users. Into my user, this is the user. So I have to copy this user ID. So we can go back to, we can go to our postman. So from our postman, we need to call this a uh, get endpoint. So you need to enter your your URL of your key clock, the name of your room here, and you need to set two factor auth and manage two FA, and you can pass a valid user ID here. After say after this one is valid, you can just click send. So right now I'm not authorized. First of all, I must be authorized for me to use this endpoint. So I will try to log in first with my credentials. So right now, this one is not yet there. Yeah, I will get the token here. And I can come here and I can go to the headers and I can paste this token, the bearer token, and I'll click send. So after sending, I have this base 64. This is the image that we are supposed to scan with our phone so that it, the application will be able to generate the, the, the six digit code. So what I can do, I can copy this code, this base 64, and I can come here. So from, I can reload, you can go anywhere. So I'm using this base 64 guru so i can paste my 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 basic step and i can click decode image and i have to scan this image with my phone so let me scan this with my phone so open the google authenticator and scan the qr code after scanning uh, it will add this to my google authenticator so it means everything is now set up so if it's now set up, if I go to my key clock, if I go to credentials so far, I only have password, but I need to complete the registration process so that here OTP will be shown here. So I can come back to my, to my, I can come back here and I can copy this code. It's, it is required. This is your secret. And I can now go to the, to another endpoint, which is for submit to FA. From this endpoint, if I go to, let me go to, to the body, I need to paste this, this code here, and this is your JSON body, and here it's a valid six, uh, six digit code that is being showed after, after you scan the QR code. So my code now is three, two, 
Uh, but before I do that, I must have a bearer token which is authenticated. So let me just do this. Let me get another another valid token and I can go to post. And from my headers, I need to enter this one which is still valid. So you must be authenticated for you to, to be able to complete the registration process. Now I have to enter the digit that is being shown on my Google Authenticator. So right now it's showing 063454. It depends with the, with, the, with the value on your phone. So if I send this, it will be able to register this as a two-factor authentication. So if I go to here, if I refresh here, it, you see an OTP. So it means this user is now able to log in with the password and OTP. So let's try to log in again with the same URL that I was using before. So here, if I try to send this one, I will get an invalid user credentials because I didn't provide the OTP. So I need to provide the OTP from Google Authenticator and add a parameter here. So now the OTP here, it's going to, I will enter a valid OTP. So if I just enter a, any digit here, I will get an invalid OTP. So I need to enter a valid one that is being shown on Google Authenticator. And if it's valid, if I do this, I will get a valid token. So this is how you can integrate uh, with Google Authenticator key clock integration on your application. So if you are new to this channel, make kindly subscribe, click the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever you upload new video. You can get the code on my GitHub, which is called GitHub, it's code with BISC. Salut coders.